Well, today you're going to learn how to build a fully animated 3D photo carousel right inside DaVinci Resolve. All right, let's start by pressing Ctrl plus N to create a new timeline. Then uncheck Use Project Settings and swap to Format so we can make the video vertical. This is super important for how your video will look on platforms like TikTok or Shorts. Now, go ahead and drag your main video clip onto the timeline. As you can see, the video is about someone flipping through photos. I found this stock video online, but for the best possible result, I really recommend filming this yourself. Next, place all the photos or video clips you want to use on the timeline, stacking them on tracks above the main video. Once they're all in place, select all of them, right-click, and choose New Fusion Composition. Now let's head over to the Fusion page. First thing, let's select all the merge nodes that DaVinci created and delete them all because we want to put all our photos into a 3D dimension manually. I'll also go ahead and delete the default background node that's there because we're not going to need it. Okay, I'm just going to quickly organize these nodes and I'll be right back. Perfect. Now let's start by tracking the hand's movement to get a really realistic interactive look. So select your main video node and press Ctrl plus spacebar to search about the tracker node. Now, position the tracker pattern over a good spot on the SD card. Then, over in the Inspector tab, change the Adaptive Mode to Best Match, and click the double arrow icon to track the motion through the entire video. Once you've confirmed that the track is solid, swap over to the Operation tab and choose Match Move. Okay, now let's move on to creating the HUD effect for our photos. First, let's view one of the photos by clicking 2 on the keyboard. The shape I want is one with curved corners, so for that, I'm going to grab a rectangle mask and connect it to the mask input of the photo. First, make sure the Invert button is unchecked. I'll set the width to about 0.98 and the height to 0.98 as well. And now, just increase the corner radius until you get the effect you want. Then go ahead and connect this same mask's output to the mask input of all the other photos. Because they all have the same resolution, we'll get the same rounded corner shape on every single one. The second step is that I want a stroke line around the photos. For that, I'm going to use Neo Inner Glow. This node is actually a custom group of several nodes that I use to speed up my workflow. You can find the affiliate link for it in the description, and don't forget to use the discount code to get 10% off. So, for this case, I'll just increase the radius to get a thicker stroke, and I'll change the color to gray. Now, to apply this same effect to the other images, just select the Neo Inner Glow node, Click Ctrl plus C to copy, select the next image, and press Ctrl plus V to paste. Do this for all your images. Now it's time to bring them into the 3D dimension by adding Image Plane 3D nodes. I'm going to do a quick step here that I'll explain more later in the video, but just follow along with me so we can save some time. So just pin the setting in the inspector and pop open the pivot arrow to see the value. Now add another Image Plane 3D to the second photo. In its Transform tab, find the Z pivot value, right-click on it, choose Expression, so the Expression box shows up. Now, drag the plus icon from this Expression box over to the Z pivot value on the first Image Plane 3D node. This links them together. Now let's copy the Image Plane 3D node that has this expression in it, and paste it onto all the rest of the photos, replacing their old Image Plane 3D nodes. Now connect the first two Image Plane 3D nodes to create a Merge 3D node. You can add all your images to this one Merge 3D, but to stay organized, I'll use multiple Merge 3D nodes instead. Now when you press 2 on the final Merge 3D to view all the images, you won't notice any change because they all have the same position and rotation values. We need to arrange them in a circle, and we do that using the Y rotation value. To know the exact angle for a perfect circle, we have to do some simple math. Just write 360 divided by the number of photos. In this case, I have eight photos, so we get 40 out degrees. This means for each photo, we'll increase the Y rotation by 40 out degrees. First one to zero degree, the next to 45 degree, then 90 degree, and so on. So now we have this circular shape, and this is exactly why we made that expression earlier. Now, all we have to do is select the first image plane 3D node, and in its Z pivot value, increase it until you see the right amount of space between each photo, just as you like. And with that done, let's connect it to our tracked video. First, we need a Renderer 3D node, but when you view it, you'll see a full photo filling the screen. To fix that, I'll add a Transform 3D node before the Renderer 3D node, 
and in the inspector under translation, I'll decrease the Z value to pull the camera back until we can see all the photos. But now, if we try to rotate this group, it will go out of frame because the pivot point is wrong. So, what we need to do is change the pivot point of the rotation. I'll return the translation values to zero for now. Then, I'll change the Z pivot value on this Transform 3D node to make sure it's in the middle of our photo circle. Or, the easy way is to copy the expression from our Image Plane 3D's Z pivot and paste it onto the Z pivot of this Transform 3D node. This will make sure that if you change the spacing of the photos later, the rotation pivot point will still be in the middle automatically. Now, connect the Renderer 3D node to the second input, the foreground input, of our tracker node. So now if we view the media out, we have them together. First, let's fix the position of the photos by adding a normal 2D transform node after the renderer 3D and fixing the position and scale. Now, if you notice the video is lagging in the viewer, you can right click on the timeline viewer and uncheck motion blur and high quality. You can also click on playback, timeline proxy resolution and set it to quarter. So now it's time to animate. We'll wait for the moment in the video where it looks like he presses a button and at that frame, we'll create a keyframe on the size of our transform node and we'll lower the value to zero. We'll move forward a couple of frames until his finger is lifted off the SD card and we'll raise the size value back to one. But the problem is the photos are appearing from the center of the screen, not from the SD card. So to fix this, we need to change the pivot point and place it right over the SD card. So now that's much better. Next, let's move to the second tap on the SD card. Now select Transform 3D node, and on the frame of the second tap, put a keyframe for the Y rotation value. Go forward a couple of frames, in my case it's 5 frames, and change the Y rotation value to spin to the next photo. Then go to the third tap, put a keyframe, go forward 5 frames, and change the value. And you'll do that for all of your photo switches. Now to make the animation smoother, go and open the spline editor, select all the keyframes, and press F to flatten them. Then you can adjust the ease in and ease out handles as you like to get the speed you want. Now time for a small trick. First, let's separate the HUD effect by connecting the tracker node output to the output of our main video. This will create a merge node. Next, select the tracker node, and in the inspector under operation, change the merge type to foreground only. Then select the merge node and set the apply mode to screen. Second trick, select the renderer 3D node and change the renderer type to hardware renderer. Then swap to its settings tab and check the box to apply motion blur. And finally go to the transform node and enable motion blur there as well for the final effect. So, that is for today. See you in the next video.